in a really nerdy way, my favorite technique in machine vision lighting, um, but it's degree of collimation. And I love this technique because it's so um, underappreciated almost in a way. People kind of overlook it, but it actually has a lot of impact on your machine vision application. So the degree of collimation is if you were to take your sample and have one point on your sample, the angle at which the light is hitting that point is your degree of collimation. Um, so typically we have a backlight um, and a cylindrical sample and the light is shining straight up. This is kind of what we picture a backlight to look like. So our image should look something like this. Super clear, crisp lines, easy peasy, great measurement technique. But a lot of times we get an image that looks unclear, very poor lighting. And why is this happening? Why, are, why is our image not what we expect it to be? And that's because backlights don't shine up in perfectly straight directions. They are diffuse. So the light is shining up in multiple directions, which means there is a scenario in which the light is shining up, hitting the top of our sample and being reflected into our camera. So the light is kind of coming around the edges and going up into our camera. So we're not getting that clear edge that we wanted to get. So how do we improve this image? You know, we want to get, this is what we want, this is the goal. How do we get to that? Um, the first is the um, changing the size of the light. If our, if our working distance is restricted, and that's all that we can change is how big our light is, we just want to make this angle smaller. So if we make our light smaller, we're cutting off that angle that would be able to hit the top of our sample and go into our camera. We're cutting that off, so now no matter what, this light isn't big enough to go up and reflect into the camera, so we're getting much straighter lines. Um, versus this low degree of collimation light, there definitely is gonna be a scenario where the light can wrap around. If the light of, or the size of our light is the, you know, we can't change that, but we do have play in the working distance, we can do the same thing by just increasing our working distance. So if it's really, really close to it, um, then it can, if it's really close to it, then you do have that angle where it can wrap around. But the further we move away, the smaller that angle gets, the less likely it is to cause a problem. Um, kind of more examples of high degrees of collimation versus low. This is the high degree. This is taken with um, the MFU backlight, I believe, that really high collimated one. And this is taken with just a normal, normal backlight, nothing special, pretty close to it. So what I just kind of talked about, ways to change the collimation, it's kind of like a fake, fake collimation, if you will. Technically, you're changing the angle at which the light is hitting the sample, but you're not making the light any more or less parallel by just adjusting the size of the light or the light working distance. So um, we kind of call it fake collimation because it's solving the problem, but not the same way that typical collimation can. So we use light control film is kind of more like a semi or true collimation. So light control film, it can be in a horizontal or a vertical direction, and you put that on top of your light and it blocks the light coming in that direction. So if I have my light shining up everywhere, and I have a few slides that get into this later, so I won't go too much, but long story short, it um, will block the light so it comes out in a more parallel direction. And then the MFU I talked about before uses optics to make a true collimation. So there's the MSU is the optical, um, coaxial light and the MFU is our optical backlight. Um, I will say that the degree of collimation also is pays attention to front light. So this is where I think it gets overlooked a lot is your light working distance. If I have my LFX V and I put it really close to my can, it works like a dome light and I'm removing all those 3D structures. As I move it further and further away, I'm actually now highlighting those 3D structures you can see. And so, Depending on what I wanted to solve in this application, if I were to take my LFXV, put it, you know, too far away, oh, that doesn't solve it, I toss it away and move on to the next light, I could have had the best solution, but I just didn't adjust my working distance, therefore I didn't pick the right light. So, and this works with bar lights, it works with ring, it works with anything. So before you move on to your light, if you take nothing away from this training, always adjust your working distance before you move on, just to make sure there isn't like a sweet spot that um, solves the application the way you want to solve it. Another example of this is um, batteries. Um, if you have a dent in a battery, high degree of collimation, we move a lo long working distance, we can see that defect, but as we get closer and closer, the defect disappears and it just doesn't look like there's a problem. So once again, if you had a coaxial light at the wrong light working distance, you couldn't solve the application, but really you could. 